Good evening, church. Thank you for coming. And tonight we want to continue our spiritual warfare um, series. And I believe that the Lord will bless us tonight. Before we get into the teaching, we want to take a moment and thank the Lord and give him praise and thank him for his message, his goodness in our lives. Let's take a moment and express our gratitude to God and let him know that we appreciate him, his love, his presence, his protection, his provision, his preservation of our lives. So let's give him praise. I want you to open your mouth and just give God praise and thank him. Thank him. Let heaven hear your voice. Let heaven hear your voice. Show your appreciation to the Lord. He has been good to us. He has been good to us. In spite of any challenges that we may be facing, he has been still good to us. He never sleeps nor slumber. He's always watching over us. Let him know. Let him know. Not just in your thoughts, but in your words. Express it to the Lord. Express it to him. Give him praise. Give him glory. He alone deserves this. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for watching over us. Thank you, Lord, for your message. None of us are perfect. But, Lord, your love for us is unconditional. And we are grateful for loving us in spite of our flaws, in spite of our mistakes and errors, in spite of sometimes our disobedience, and we give you praise for watching over us and our loved ones, preserving us, taking us back and forth each and every day. We sleep, we wake up, not because we wake ourselves up, but it is you that wakes us up. And we say, Lord, we thank you. Every breath we take in and take out is a reminder of our dependence on you, O oh God. And we give you all the praise we give you all the praise. We love you, Lord. We bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. Humble myself before you, O oh God, and ask for your grace. Ask for your help, O oh God, to be able to be used by you to be a blessing to all that are connected or will be connected in the name of Jesus, I pray thy Lord, your presence, O oh God, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are, O oh God, that will be felt among us. Speak to us tonight. Let us be blessed. As we have come, let us never return the same. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before we get into the word, uh, there's a prayer I want us to pray first. Now, we all have soft spots, and we all have weak spots. Now, when some, you have a soft spot, something that easily gets you, you know, um, in the whole body, there's a certain part of our body that is very soft, very sensitive. And we want to pray this prayer. Maybe you might not Admit that you have a soft spot or a weak spot. I want you to still pray because God knows that you have it. We all have it. So this is the prayer I want us to pray. Oh, Lord, protect my soft spots and strengthen my weak spots so that the, the devil will not gain an advantage over me. Because that is what the enemy does. He looks for the soft spot in us. He looks for the weak point. And he, takes, he uses that to take advantage. So let it be our prayer tonight. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. God knows your soft spot. He knows your weak spot. So talk to him and he's going to strengthen you. He's going to protect that soft spot. He's going to strengthen that weak spot. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come to you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. I have soft spots. All of us have soft spots. Weak spots, oh God, that the enemy can use to take advantage of us. 
So we ask, O oh God, tonight the Lord protect us as soft spot that the enemy cannot get to us. The weak spot that the enemy cannot get to us so that he can get advantage of us. Lord, strengthen that weak spot of us. Each and every individual, as they are connected from home, as they are watching, as they are here, Lord, strengthen our weak spot. Protect our soft spot, O oh God, so that the enemy will not take advantage of us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to say something in introduction before we get into. As a spirit, last week we looked at a spiritual warrior, a prayer warrior. And I want to re emphasize this statement. As a, spirit, as a prayer warrior, or prayer warriors, we don't fight alone. We don't fight alone. We look in the scriptures. David was a, was a warrior. He has men around him. He was fighting with men. As a prayer warrior, you don't fight alone. You don't leave anyone behind. You know, when we look at the military, those that have served, they have band of brothers. They don't leave anyone behind. No matter how dangerous it is, they make sure that they, if you are wounded, they are not going to leave you there. They are going to pick you and go with you to cover. As prayer warriors, we don't leave anyone behind. We don't watch others fight their battles alone. You cannot be a prayer warrior and be selfish. It's not possible. Because you are representing Christ. If Christ was to be selfish, he wouldn't have died. Because in the first place, he's not dying for a righteous person. So remember, don't fight alone. Always have what? Support. Be part of fighting people. Leave, don't leave anyone behind and don't watch others fight their battles alone. Don't finish fighting your battles before extending help. Somebody might think, I have my own battles. Let me finish fighting mine and gain victory. Then I will help somebody else. No. It doesn't work that way. What if you are done with yours and the person is no more? Don't run away from a fellow warrior fighting their battles. I've seen that time and time. When somebody is going through something, you come alongside with them, to them. Don't run away. Some people don't want to deal with, you know, I don't, I don't have time. I have my own thing. No. We have to stand by each other. We don't run away. If you run away from somebody that is battling, then you can be able to help. You are, you are waiting to run away in a battle when you face your own. So don't run away. Stay with whoever is fighting. Stand with them. And that is, that is how the heart of a warrior is. So a warrior doesn't mean that you don't have your own battles. It means that you also care about other people as well. Now this message is, let me say something about parents and grandparents. If you are listening, it is good to pray for your children. It is good. It is better to teach them how to pray. Okay, we are moving. We are building upon. It is good to pray for them. It is better to teach them how to pray. It is best to pray and train them to be prayer warriors. There is a difference. Because last week I talked about the kind of challenges that we are facing now is very scary. You can face a challenge and you can, you can even forget to open your mouth and pray because it's too overwhelming. We need to have a warrior's heart, shake ourselves and rise up. So it is good to pray for your children or your grandchildren. It is better for you to teach them how to pray. 
And it is best for you to be able to train them to be warriors themselves. Because there are certain things they'll get to a point they will not going to share with you. Their struggles. But if they know how to war. We want to look at spiritual exercise. Spiritual exercise. 1 Timothy 4.8 Sometimes we take, for, we take for granted our spiritual exercise. We only think about the physical. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much more better. Promising benefit in this life and in the life to come. First Timothy 6.6 6. But godliness with contentment, a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God, is great gain or brings huge profit. As important as physical exercise, exercises are, including maybe blood flow, strength, healthy organs, that's why we exercise. Spiritual exercises produces similar benefit and even more. You are not only just having a body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. So if you are taking care of your body, your physical body, you need to take care of what? Your spiritual body as well. It's part of it. As important as the essentials of lives are, going to work, raising your children, taking them to school, you do things. It is part of life. It is important. But spiritual exercise, like prayer, carry far more benefit in this life and after. Because when we do physical things, we tend to see instant result or eventual result. Spiritual things is the same. But Scripture is saying that even though physical things has benefit to us, Spiritual things has much more benefit. So it leads for us to invest spiritually the same way we do in the natural. For our whole wellness. If you are well, your whole is not, doesn't mean that only your, your body. Some people are not whole. They are not well in the mind. Some people are not well in their soul. So we need that wholeness spiritually. So that as you are exercising spiritually, doing engaging spiritual exercise, it affects your whole life. So think about it. Anything that we benefit in this physical world spiritually. I was writing and it's, I just put in that when you exercise spiritually as, the, as well as naturally for your total wellness, wholeness, your life will be smiling to the bank because the benefit, the profit that comes out of it. A lot of people take spiritual things for granted. When, they see, when they, we call for prayer, they are running away. Maybe I don't, have an, I don't have an emergency. I don't have a pressing need, so I don't need to get into corporate prayer. I don't have time. I have, you know, all kinds of things. Prayer, fasting, studying the word of God, they are all spiritual exercises. It builds your spiritual muscles. It gives you stamina for strength and endurance. So that when, when a challenge happens or when a storm hits, look at an athlete. You don't engage in a comp in competition in the moment when the time is up. They train. Spiritual or prayer warriors, you have to be training for your muscles, your spiritual muscles to what you gain strength. Why? There are certain battles in life that are tougher, more tougher than others. And there are certain battles that last longer than others. 
You need strength. You need stamina. And that is why some people give up. There's a scripture in the Proverbs that says that when you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is little. So a lot of believers, they are spiritual strength, muscles, endurance, their, their stamina is so little. But they think that when, it, when, when disaster strikes or a challenge happens, they can just wake up and pray because they have just knowledge of what, how to pray. It is good to have knowledge, but you need to be able to engage that exercise, that spiritual exercise, all the time. There are two main enemies that we want to deal with. We have already talked about the devil. There is another enemy. That is our flesh. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you do not, so that you are not to do what you want to do. Matthew 26, 41, Jesus said, pray, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Watch and pray. Spiritual strength, spiritual stamina to resist temptation. It is not just knowledge. To resist temptation, you have to have that spiritual strength to be able to do that, not just willpower. Watch and pray that you don't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we have seen that the flesh doesn't want to do what God wants him to do or want us to do. That is us. And we have also seen that the flesh is also weak. We talk about the flesh, self, self-ego, pride, its desire, behavior and personality. That is where doubt, fear comes out. Unbelief and all kinds of evil. We, we, because of our fallen nature, you don't have to teach somebody to, do, to, uh, to act in sin. Kids grow up and they start acting. You ask yourself, where did they learn from? The flesh is an enemy when it is in charge, but a friend and a servant when it is subdued. The true benefit of the flesh, when it's, it's surrounded or subdued or in submission, but when we leave it unchecked, it becomes our worst enemy. Daily self-denial, carrying our cross, denying the flesh what it wants and feed it with what it needs. The flesh doesn't want to pray. The flesh doesn't want to study the word. I've talked to some people when they, they say when it gets to prayer, they just, just they feel, they, they lose interest. They feel sleepy. But when it comes to watching other programs, the sleep is gone. That is not right. That is dangerous. And when you take it for granted, the enemy gets the gets tend to have an advantage of us. Deny the flesh what it wants and feed it with what it needs. It needs the word of God. It needs to pray. Sub, you have to subdue the flesh. Don't give in to it. I don't feel like praying. Pray. Sometimes you have to force yourself. Get into the presence of God. I love to pray. But it's not every time I feel like I want to pray. But I know I need to pray. So I tell the flesh, you, have, you are going. I'm not leaving you behind. The devil. So the flesh is an enemy that we have to submit to God. And through prayer and fasting, that's one way to be able to bring the flesh down. In submission. Else... It always wants to be in control. We need the Holy Spirit to be able to help us to keep this flesh under control. The devil, 
let's look at the devil and the connection with the flesh. Matthew 16, 23, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, merely human concerns. You could see the flesh. The devil is always concerned with the flesh because he knows the flesh is weak. The flesh, if it's in control, he's happy because the flesh will not do what God wants him to do. The flesh will not do what God wants us to do. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Paul saying, but I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So the enemy has a way to come in and to deceive us. Satan or the devil tries or works best in the activity and the dominion of the flesh. When the flesh is in charge, Satan is happy. He doesn't do, have to do a lot. He sowed the seeds and the flesh takes, his, takes flight. The devil is limited without the cooperation of the flesh. Satan can trick or strip us easily when we are being led or in control or trying to satisfy our fleshy desires. He can easily trick us or trip us. Satan will always try to appeal or tempt our flesh and his desire. Look at Eve. He comes, he knows the flesh. He will, he will bring that temptation to us. One less enemy to fight or to worry about when the flesh is under the control of the spirit. So don't let your flesh join the enemy. And the flesh is very slippery. It will slip out. You have to just catch it, come back. It will slip up again, bring it back. We want to look at some spiritual battles, critical spiritual battles, 2 Corinthians 2.11. In order that no advantage will be taken off us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So the enemy always wants, he likes working undercover. He doesn't want a lot of resistance. So he comes in a way that you may not think that he's, you know, he's involved. He, ha he wants to make sure he can take advantage of our ignorance. 2 Corinthians 11.3, Paul speaking. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted as just Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. So the enemy comes and deceives us. He has been here before we were born. He is a master of deception. You cannot overcome the enemy by your own wisdom. Even by your own experience. You need, we need to be alert, spiritually alert and by discernment by the Holy Spirit to detect him. Because we looked at he comes like an angel of light. He knows every believer. Even if he wants you to sin, he will not make it very plain to you. He knows this person is very spiritual. So I need to be able to know how to be able to go around it. If I come directly, he will say no. But if I come in a way, in a package, that it doesn't look like a sin. But at the same time, I want him to get to sin. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us to descend. Nobody is, is perfect. That is why we need to lean on God. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. The enemy uses deception to take advantage of us. When every time he comes in a way, he has a bigger goal in mind than the initial attack or what initial what engagement with you. He always have a what something behind. Let's take for example. If the enemy comes into in a deceptive way, 
may be trying to tempt you uh, to step out of your marriage. It is not that simple. He has a bigger goal in mind. So it is not just you stepping out of your marriage. It is going to cost you and the generation after you. He has always a bigger goal in mind. That is why God, the Bible did not tell us to manage sin. He says flee. Flee temptation. Flee. Don't manage it. Don't think, oh, I'm very spiritual, very prayerful. When, you, when sin is coming, it's like, yeah, I'm strong. No. Don't waste that strength on it because you will not survive. We want to look at our, our, one of the battles that we have to look at first. The battle for your faith, my faith, your faith, it is what the enemy is always going for. One of his main goals is your faith. What is the big deal of he's trying to get, get to our faith? When we talk about faith, I want to define it in two ways. One, faith is literally faith in God. Your trust in God. That is one. Two, your whole life as a Christian, that is faith. That is a faith walk. Two definitions. Your trust in God and your whole life as a Christian or the whole Christian race. Second Timothy 4, 7. Paul saying to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Why? It is important for us to realize that I have kept the faith. It is something that is precious. Those that keep the faith remain faithful to the end. So you can fight any, any, any battle, but if you, don't, you lose the faith, you lost everything. Let's look at Luke 22, 31 to 32. This is, uh, this is Jesus speaking. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to seat all of you, all the disciples, as wheat. To seat is to be able to shake you, try to break you. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Why would Jesus make mention of that? Your faith, it is critical. When you turn, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. One of the main goals of Satan in our life is to cause our faith to fail. If you don't, if you don't know the importance of something that you possess, you easily give it out. Jacob and Esau. Esau was so hungry. Firstborn. He just gave that right to him. If you don't know what you are holding, what is so precious, which is your faith, you will easily give it out. If you lose anything or anyone in life, don't lose your faith in addition. If you lose anything in life or anyone precious, dear to you, please hold fast to your faith. Because when the enemy is coming after you, one of the main things is coming, is coming after your faith. Your trust in God, your, your, who you are as a believer, a child of God. Your faith is your direct connection to God or His presence. Your faith is your lifeline or jacket in God, in the sea of life. You can drown easily. Your faith can preserve, sustain you, and cause you to survive and thrive again in any storm of life. Your growing faith, it is what you need for the challenges that we face each and every day. Some people don't grow their faith. 
oh, have faith in God, I trust in God. You have to grow it. Because the challenges you and I will be facing, or our loved ones will be facing, they are very severe. They are very scary, and, and, and it can just bring down your faith. You, even you forget that you have a God. That is how serious sometimes some situations are. Have you talked to somebody that they are going through a tough time and you're trying to encourage them in the Lord and they will just shut you down? They just don't want to listen. We need to build our faith, build our confidence each and every day to have deep roots. What is the scheme of the enemy to weaken and for us to lose our faith so that we drift away from his ways? The second scheme is to make it difficult, impossible for what you would do to grow your faith. Like praying, studying the word of God, staying connected to other believers. The enemy wants to disconnect, uproot, or break you away from the source so that he can take advantage of you. Your faith is your connection. If you lose it, you lose that connection. Then he can have advantage over you. If you have lost anything or everything and you are holding to your faith, you, you are still victorious over the enemy. Because your faith can cause you to what? To come back again. So when, when, it's, when you are having difficulty... Praying, having passion for being interested in prayer, corporate prayer, being called. And it's like, oh. Know that the enemy is around the corner. He's excited. The enemy uses distraction. We get so consumed with our own personal issues. Life. We will not ignore life challenges. But sometimes they become so much that we, we begin to make excuses. But remember, no matter how tough it is, no matter how you are overwhelmed, please make time. Stay connected. Pull yourself into his presence. Get some worship. Saturate your environment with some worship. Do something till you get yourself back again. Busyness. With work, business, taking care of your children, business, doing something. It's good to be busy, to get things done. But also remember, your relationship with God, your faith needs to also be taken care of. Deception. The enemy can convince us that it's okay. It's not a big deal. God understands. No. It is our responsibility to be able to stay connected to God. And the enemy is happy when we will convince ourselves or we hear voices like that and just relax. No. Spend time. No matter how you are tired throughout the day, just, just pull away when everything is done. Just spend some time with God. The world system is never designed to make our work with God easy. No. Battle for destiny. 1 Corinthians 2 9. However, it is written, for no eye has seen, no ear has heard, what no man, no man's mind has conceived. No human mind has conceived the things God has prepared for those that love him. Psalm 8, verse 4 to 5. What are mere mortals that you, you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them, yet you made them only little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. The purpose of salvation is not only to, for just eternal life or to make it to heaven but also to live a life of productivity, meaningfulness, and impact. There is a purpose why God created us with unique ability 
And reason why we are alive today. It is important to discover the purpose why you are alive, why God created you, and pursue it with all your heart, alongside with your own personal ambitions. Sometimes it might be two different things. Sometimes it might be the same thing. Our destinies are interconnected. Your purpose and my purpose are connected. If I fulfill my purpose, it affects you. If you don't, it affects me. Like the human body. Different parts. But every, every, they all play different roles or function. But they all affect everything we do. The enemy doesn't want us to fulfill God's purpose. We have a general purpose to live a life and pleasing to the Lord. Then we have a specific purpose why God created you and gave you certain abilities in you. We need to be able to find out. The enemy will try to fight us trying to discover God, the divine purpose or try to lead us away. He will deny us. Either he stops you or he shifts you to a different purpose altogether. Frustration. The enemy will try to frustrate us trying to fulfill God's purpose. Temptation. He will tempt us to shift our focus from God's purpose just to our own purpose. God is not against our, we having self-ambition. What do you want to do? But we also, as a believer, you have to also seek God. Draw closer to him for why am I on this earth? The enemy always tries to present alternatives just to misdirect believers. He's try, he's, he's, he tries to create confusion. Some people feel that they are not, they are victims of life circumstances. Their life doesn't matter. Nobody alive or that was created have no purpose. Nobody. Even if your parent did not plan to have you. You have a purpose. You were created by God. And your parents were just passage into the earth. Don't dismiss the idea. There's a deception. Don't dismiss the idea of destiny and purpose. Everyone. But everyone's destiny is different. See God to reveal what he has for you. And one thing that you don't have to, somebody, I remember one time I, was, I had a friend that he thought to know God's people, he has to go to a Bible school. No. That is a lie. To know God's purpose is to be able to be intimate with God. He will make it known to you. Draw closer to the person. Draw closer to God. He will reveal it to you. You don't have to force it. He will make it known to you. Family battles. Psalm 68 verse 6. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives joy. Gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious sleep in a Sanskrit land. Acts 33 verse 25. You are the children of those, of those prophets and you are included in the covenant of God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, through your descendants, all families on earth will be blessed. God created the family system. One of the reasons is foundation. Origin, beginning. When we talk about foundation, we are talking about origin, beginning, strength, and stability. A sense of belonging. That is why if your parents doesn't open up and accept you, you feel rejected. People expect, they experience rejection. A sense of identity. If somebody doesn't know their parents, maybe they were adopted. They are looking for 
something is missing in their life. And sometimes we may not understand if we have parents and we, can, we know them. There is a sense of identity. They, they feel that there's something missing. A sense of stability. A loving and peaceful environment. You want to be part of it. That's how God created it to be. But remember, these family foundations, because of our fallen nature, it's not perfect. 1 Corinthians 3, 9, 3, 11, Christ is our new foundation. That is why when we accept Christ Jesus as personal Savior, he becomes our foundation now. That's where we build our life on. When you are living for him, you are, you are living for you are, your life is being built again on that foundation. The second thing, apart from foundation that why uh, families were put together was generational, bloodlines, heritage, uh, and, and inheritance. We inherit those things in the bloodline because of Christ Jesus, because of his blood. We are connected to a new bloodline. Sometimes our bloodlines are not pretty. We inherit certain things that are wrong. So that is why when you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creature. So anything that is, that is not good in your family line, in Christ, by the power of God, it can be changed. The schemes of the enemy is to attack the foundation, to weaken, to destroy that foundation. The second thing is to be able to keep families in bondage. That means generational negative patterns. There are certain families. They either have children out of wedlock. There are certain families that can't stay married. There are certain families that have certain traits or behavior. All these things, the enemy has attacked the foundation to cause that to happen. How? How does he achieve that? By breaking marriages and homes. So not all divorces, I would say not all, the majority of divorces is the enemy behind it. He will make a conflict be blown out of proportion. So the enemy is attacking because he knows that when he attacks the foundation, anything that comes from the foundation, the children, the grandparents, their foundation is weak. And we could see a repetition of something that is negative. Toxic environment, when you are growing up, the enemy always tries to bring conflict so that when you grow up in such environment, it messes you up. Disobedience, lifestyle, the kind of lifestyle. Pollution of our bloodlines. Ungodly traits and behavior. It's passed on from one generation to the other. And that is why when you become a believer, when you see certain patterns, it has to stop with you and your children. It doesn't, doesn't have to continue. And that it takes prayer. It takes a warfare because Christ has done all these things for us. We have to take the work that he has done and overcome the enemy for a new beginning altogether. Battle alert. We do get alert on our phones. Sometimes there is a battle alert. It takes the Holy Spirit to alert us. Wake up. Pray more. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you pray more. Draw closer to God more. And you may wonder why. Just listen and do. Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the spirit of all, on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the lost people. Be alert. Be alert. First Peter 5, 8. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring like looking for someone to devour. Be alert. Be alert. 
It takes the Holy Spirit to help us to become alert. Our spirit is like our cell phone. The Holy Spirit will give you an alert. And sometimes he will say, be careful with this kind of relationship, with this person. It's not that you have to hate the person, but he said, be careful. That means if you are not careful, it can lead to other things. Maybe you're a guy, and the lady is becoming too extremely nice. And you have a check in your spirit. You have to be careful. Because it can lead to something else that you've never even thought or planned to do. The Holy Spirit gives us an alert. Maybe you have a, a, a crisis at home in your family. And the Holy Spirit can tell you, just be quiet and apologize. No. I am right. Just listen. We need an alert. The enemy distracts us so that he can interrupt our focus. When we are weak or worn down by life challenges, it becomes an open door. That is why I'm saying that when you are so overwhelmed, don't put God aside. Draw closer. Pull yourself. Draw yourself into his presence. It is not every day that you feel like praying or studying the word. Even pastors, if they will be honest enough, they will tell you, we are all human. Slumbering, slothfulness in prayer and in the word, laziness, spiritual laziness. We, 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 can do, we want to do anything, any activity, be part of any group. But when it comes to prayer, especially prayer, that is what is really, the enemy is so happy when we are not engaged in prayer because he knows that our, part of our connection is what? Loose. Obsession with something that is more, more than the things of God. We have to be careful. Because the enemy wants to break your, break your focus so that he can be able to zoom in. The moment your connection is weak, you cannot resist him. You cannot know he's coming. Battle ready. Are you ready for battle? Let's look at it quickly. First, Samuel 17, 37. The Lord will rescue me from the paw of the lion. This is David speaking to Saul. And the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the... Sorry, let me read it. The Lord will rescue me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear. He will also rescue me from the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord will be with you. Now, David is telling Saul, I am ready for battle because I know what the Lord delivered me out of it. How can you be ready for battle? We have to be always ready. Grow in intimacy with God. You are always close to God. You don't wait until you start praying. I've seen people, I've seen believers, when they have trouble, when there's an emergency, then you see them coming to prayer meetings. No. That is wrong. It shouldn't be like that. You have to always stay in contact with God. Growing your faith. Persistent in prayer. Standing with others. Even if you don't have any battle. Because remember I told you, it builds spiritual muscles. Stamina. So that when, you're, when you face yours, you are ready. You are already ready. Learn from the past. Humble yourself. And always be expectant for the future. Know that it is not that any battle you get into, you have already won. You are going with a winning mentality because of what Christ has done for you. So no matter how big the situation is, if God healed you of a, a headache, it is the same God that can heal you of that cancer. It is the God behind what was done. It is not the situation that measures whether you can be able to win or not. The God that is with you. Battle cry. Battle cry is not a cry of mourning or fear or defeat. Like we are doomed and finished. 
like the Israelites when they saw Pharaoh approaching behind them and they saw the Red Sea before them, they were crying. We cannot give up before the battle or in the middle or when we are close to victory. A battle cry is a cry to take your position in the Lord. Whenever there's a situation, there's a battle, you, get, you begin to get yourself gingered up, get some worship into it, get some praises, change your environment, change, that changes your mind, your thinking. Get into the word of God. What is the word of God saying about that situation? Arm yourself with weapons, which is the word of God, with praise. That is a battle cry, a call upon God for his intervention. Some first Samuel 17 10. This is this is Goliath saying, I, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man to fight. And this is the response of David. He's always he's, he's crying. He says that who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Psalm 8:2. Through the praise of his children and infants, you have established stronghold against the, your enemies to silence their foe and the avenger. A battle cry is a declaration of victory before the battle starts. Because you have already won. Bible says, he that is born of God overcomes. So as you march forward, you are marching forward in the name of the Lord. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. He finished that battle before the battle starts. It's like watching a football game. You know the scores already, you are just replaying. No matter how close they get to the end zone, you know it's not going to happen. If you already know the score. The devil always tempts us to shut us up or keep our mouth closed. Because he knows if he can keep us our mouth closed or make us say the wrong thing, he has an advantage. So either you cannot, you, you don't pray or you say the wrong things. I will die. This will kill me. I'm over. My life is over. No. Close mouth lead to close destiny or leads to what? Defeat. If, if there are people who will pray, there is always a God ready to answer. Battle tested. Are you tested for battle? That is our last before we get into prayer. First Samuel 17, 34 to 35. David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion on a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. When the enemy is coming after your marriage, your children, you go after the enemy. I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its head, struck it, and killed it. That is a warrior. You don't mess with a warrior. You don't come close to what belongs to him. Your faith. When the enemy is coming after your faith, you have to stand strong. Coming after your loved ones, you have to stand strong. That is the attitude. Look at David. I went after it and I got what I needed. And when the enemy came back, I dealt with the enemy. 2 Corinthians 1.10 He has delivered us from such deadly peril and he would deliver us. In him we have placed our hope that he will yet again deliver us. That is somebody that is battle tested, ready. Knowing that victory belongs to them. Testimonies of God's faithfulness in your life makes you battle tested because you know what God has done for you. Everybody has this testimony. 
Being alive is a testimony. Everybody has a testimony. No matter how significant you may think it is, it is a testimony. How can you raise a testimony of a headache and face a, 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 a battle of cancer, a, a, a death sentence? It is the God behind that miracle. It's what you are invoking. Victories in life and, and, and in life and others, other people's life that you stood by, people that you stood by them. That is why I said that warrior has to stand with people. If I stand with you and there is victory, I will remind the devil what the Lord did in this person's life. To let him know that he, there is no way he can, he can overcome. Continue training and be matured spiritually. And also, don't ever hang your armory in defeat and surrender as a warrior. You have to stand and fight to the end. Anyone that fights to the end, even if they pass away to the, to the other side, it is victory. Why? Because of faith. We want to get into prayer. But I want to offer the opportunity for anyone that is not saved. If you are watching from home, here, I want you to pray a prayer with me if you are not saved to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Because that is the first way, that is your foundation. If you don't are not on that foundation, you are no match for the devil. Because you are going to battle in your own name. But you need to go into battle in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray with me. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I receive him as my personal Savior. I ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, forgive me and cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Come and live in my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to get into prayer. Time is fast spent. Luke 22, 31, 32. But I pray for you, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. We read, already read the scripture. That when you turn back, you strengthen your brothers. The first prayer point is, in the name of Jesus, we resist and frustrate the agenda, every agenda of the devil, to cause my faith to fail by the power in the blood of Jesus. Begin to talk to God right now. Begin to talk to God right now. In the name of Jesus, declare right now, in Jesus' name, resist and frustrate every agenda of the enemy. To cause your faith, my faith, your faith to fail. The enemy is planning. The enemy is scheming. He wants to disconnect our trust in God. He wants us to cause us to lose hope, to doubt his, in his, doubt his promises. We resist in the name of Jesus every agenda of the enemy. We resist right now and frustrate to cause our faith to fail. We cannot afford our faith to fail, Lord. So in the name of Jesus, every agenda of the enemy, we resist and frustrate right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we resist and frustrate every agenda of the devil to cause my faith, to cause anyone's faith to fail by the power in the blood of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. 
We want to continue. We want to ask and receive fresh understanding and power to grow our faith and to hold fast to it to the end. In Jesus' name, let's, talk, let's, let's ask the Lord. Let's ask for fresh understanding and power. Fresh understanding and power. Fresh understanding and power. Lord, we ask so that we know how dear our faith is. Give us a deeper understanding that we can hold fast to it and not give it up. No matter the storms of life, no matter what comes against us, no matter the voice of the enemy, that God doesn't care. That if God, God would do it, he, has already, he should have already done it. Lord, help us. Empower us to grow our faith and hold fast to it. Empower us, O oh God, to stay connected to you, O oh God, in prayer, in your word, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. We want to pray Psalm 11, verse 3. When the foundations have been destroyed, what can the righteous do? Our first prayer point. Father, let the blood of Jesus cleanse the foundation of my family and I. Repair and heal anything that is broken. I decree all negative patterns be broken in the name of Jesus. Cleanse the foundation, cleanse my foundation, cleanse my foundation and my family's foundation, Lord. Blood of Jesus, cleanse our foundation from every pollution, from every contamination. Repair and heal anything that is broken. Our foundation is our strength, it's our stability. We cannot stand on a, a broken foundation. We will sink. Lord, repair and heal. We decree all negative patterns be broken now in Jesus' name. Every negative pattern in my life, in my family's life is broken in Jesus' name. It is broken now. It is broken now. It is broken now. Every negative pattern is broken now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing our foundation and repairing and healing everything that is broken and bringing an end to every negative pattern in Jesus' name. We want to continue to pray. I establish Christ as our new foundation. Let the inheritance from the bloodline of Christ become our portion in Jesus' name. Establish Christ as your new foundation. Lord, let your inheritance in your blood, O oh Lord, become our portion. Flow into our lives. Flow into our families. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Christ become our foundation, Lord. Lord Jesus become our new foundation. And let your inheritance, O God, from your blood, your bloodline become our portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Our prayer is, Lord, breathe afresh upon me your breath of life. Lord, grant me a renewed hope and perspective in life in the name of Jesus. We need the breath of God. We need the breath of God. Lord, breathe afresh upon me. Breathe afresh upon everyone here. Breathe afresh upon everyone, O oh God, watching from home. 
Breathe afresh your breath of life. Let everything that is dead come alive. Dead hope, dead dreams, let it come alive. In the name of Jesus, breathe upon us, Lord. Breathe upon us, Lord. Breathe upon us, Lord, your breath of life. Grant us a renewed hope and perspective in life. We need to be optimistic. We need to be hopeful, expectant. Anything that is negative of it, by your breath, O oh God, upon us, let it change. Let it change. Let it change. Let it change. Change our mindset. Change our thinking. Change our perspective. Let hopelessness give way to hope. Doubt give way to faith. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Psalm 91, 4 to 5. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. They are wicked arrows that fly. We are standing upon the word of God. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family and I. Lord, you are our refuge. Hide us from all arrows of darkness. In Jesus' name. The arrows that fly by day. Arrows that fly by night. Arrows that the enemy sent our way. Plead the blood of Jesus over your life and your family. Declare that he is your refuge. And ask him to hide you, hide your family from every arrow of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Lord, hide us from every wicked arrows of the enemy. Tragedies, uncertainties, disaster, destruction. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Exodus 15, 3. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Oh, God, arise, fight my battle for me and give me victory in Jesus' name. You know the battles that you are fighting, battles that you know a loved one is fighting. Ask the Lord to step in. He's a warrior. The Lord is a warrior. He said, I'll, I, my, I, the Lord himself will fight for you. Lord, fight for me. Fight my battles for me. Ask the Lord to fight your battles, your health battles, your financial battles, every battle. The Lord has never lost any battle. Let him fight for you. Marital battles. Career battles. Business battles. Every battle, the Lord fight for us and give us victory. Give us victory. Give us victory in the name of Jesus. Give us victory, Lord. Give us victory, Lord. Give somebody victory in that health battle. Give somebody victory in that mental battle, that emotional battle. Give them victory, Lord. Step into that battle. Fight for them. Fight for them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. First Chronicles 12, 32. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the time and knew the best course for Israel to take. Our prayer is, Lord, in this season of my life, I ask for your counsel for the best course of my life and my family. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray now. Ask the Lord. He knows what is best for you and I. Lord, we ask for your counsel. 
in this season of my life, in this season of our lives, we ask for your counsel, Lord. We ask for your counsel, Lord, for the best course that we should take, the best decision to make, the best way, oh God, to go, the best way to approach, the best way to think. In the name of Jesus, Lord, grant us your counsel. Grant us your counsel in this season, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 60, 19. No longer will you need the sun to shine by day, nor the moon to give its light by night. For the Lord your God will be your everlasting light. And your God will be your glory. No longer would you need. Sometimes the sun will not come. Sometimes we will not see the moon. Let it be our prayer. Lord, be, my, uh, be our everlasting light that leads and guides us in all our endeavors. Teach us your ways and crown us with your glory in Jesus' name. Father, the sun does not come every, most of the time it comes, but sometimes it doesn't show up. Sometimes the moon won't show up. But you are our everlasting light. Lead and guide us in all our endeavors. Drive away every darkness and every confusion, Lord. Make our way clear. Make your will plain to us. Teach us your ways. And crown us with your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We want to pray for the nation. Our nation, let's pray. Isaiah 60, 18. No longer will violence be heard in your land or ruin or destruction within your bodies. But you shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Our prayer is, Lord, arise and bring an end to violence in our cities and states. Expose and frustrate those planning evil. Protect us as a nation and let your peace prevail. Arise and bring an end to violence within our cities. Within the state, expose and frustrate those that are planning evil. Protect us, O oh God. Let your peace prevail. Let your peace prevail. Let your peace prevail in this season. Let your peace prevail in this election. Let your peace prevail in this nation everywhere. Bring an end to violence, Lord. In Jesus' name, you want to take a, a minute and just be quiet and just talk to God. What do you have? What is on your heart? Psalm 138, verse 8, the Lord will accomplish what which concerns me. Your unwavering, loving kindness, O God, endures forever. You do not abandon the works of your own hands. We are the work of his hands. God will not abandon you and I. Talk to God right now. Lord, accomplish. Lord, accomplish. 
what concerns everyone here, everyone at home watching. Don't abandon your, the work of your, uh, your hands. We are the work of your hands, Lord. For your loving kindness endures forever. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. To us, have mercy, O oh God. And hear and answer us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. And let's come forth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work that you have done in us. Pray that you continue, O oh God, to cause these seeds that have been planted to grow and to be able, O oh God, to become trees and bear fruit for others, O oh God, to also pluck and also be touched. I pray in the name of Jesus that you set every, every individual the prayer altar on fire afresh. Renew passion. Renew affection for you and for prayer. Holy Spirit, stir us up. Revive us. That will always be battle alert, ready, tested. In the name of Jesus, open our understanding to the Word of God. Give us discernment to know and be aware so that the enemy doesn't take advantage of us. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name that everyone that is in the middle of a battle don't know what to do, confused, ready to hang up, ready to quit. Lord, we ask for mercy that you strengthen their faith, that their faith will not fail. That you step into that battle. Whether it is a death sentence or even a headache. You are a warrior yourself. Arise and step into every battle. And give us victory. Give us victory. For they that are with us are greater than they that are against us. For those that are born of God overcomes even our faith. Our hope and our trust is in you. Let your name be glorified in our lives. Give us a testimony that we can share for others to be able, oh God, be drawn to you and to trust you more. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all for coming. Have a wonderful evening.